You've been organizing and tidying, but the moment you turn around, stuff ends up back on the counter. Someone put their stuff where it doesn't belong and you are at your wit's end. Sound familiar? Today, we're gonna be diving into four practical ideas to help get your family to put stuff back where it belongs. One way we can do this is to share our expectations clearly and consistently, knowing that perfection is not the end goal. You heard me right. <laughs> perfection is not the end goal here. We are their coach and their cheerleaders. Our team is bound to mess up. It's our job to be there to support them and encourage them to get back on their feet and keep doing what we want them to do. Let me know if you're guilty of this. If you've ever told your family, hang up your coat on the hook when you get home. Home. You tell them yesterday, they hang their coat up, and then the next day, guess what? The coat's on the floor again. And then we think, I shouldn't have to tell my family a million and one times every single week where their coat goes, right? Anytime we lead this conversation in our mind with, I shouldn't have to, that's kind of like eating an entire plate of nachos at Disney World and then hopping on the tilt-a-whirl. You are bound for disaster. In one scenario, you're feeling pretty queasy and pretty sick. In another scenario, you are building up resentment and resentment is disastrous for our relationships with our family as it grows and festers. So don't, so don't demand and we can't expect perfection from our family. So in these scenarios, when you catch your family putting things where they don't belong or not picking up after themselves right away, instead of going straight to judgment and resentment and frustration, instead I turn into Coach Katie. All right, so turn yourself into a coach. How can you get them to do what you want them to do? And think about ways that you like to be coached. And if they're on a sports team, maybe you know how they like to be coached already. What type of coaching resonates with them? Is it nagging? Is it yelling? My guess is not, right? It's supportive, helpful, constructive criticism. So whether you have family that doesn't lift a finger or you just have family members that need to get better at putting stuff away, no matter where they fall on that scale, these four tips today are gonna be for you. Number one is to be their coach and their cheerleader. If you look at your family unit like a sports team, you have to fill both of the roles of a coach and the cheerleader. Think about it like this. The sports team, their goal is what? It's to win the game. Your goal in this case is to probably create a home that's easier to tidy and for them to put stuff away and pick up after themselves. A great goal. So a coach does what? A coach supports, encourages, and gives their team, aka your family, the tools they need in order to succeed. And a cheerleader cheers them on and supports them during the game, whether they're winning or losing. So you need to be their cheerleader when they do things right and put stuff away and pick up after themselves and notice that. And a friendly reminder here, friend, you are on the same team as your family. I know when it comes to managing stuff and picking up the house, it can feel very much for a lot of people like mom versus everyone else or dad versus everyone else, whoever is the primary picker upper in your house. Do not let it be that way. Remind yourself, listen, we are on the same team. How can I help this team succeed and win and get better at what we're already doing? All right, so let's talk about number two, which is to show them practical, easy ways to do what you want them to do. And if you think about this from back to the sports analogy, right? You as a coach, what does the coach do? They create a play-by-play, -play, which is amazing. And it sounds super silly, right? But think about it, when your family gets home, what do they typically do with their stuff? It either gets thrown on the kitchen counter, the kitchen table, somewhere you don't want it, maybe just dumped in the entryway or on the floor of the garage, only for everyone to trip over it later. And it gets really frustrating. So instead of that happening, give them a play-by-play -play of what you want them to do when they get home from school, from the pool, from their friend's house, work, whatever that is. Well, honey, your keys go here. Your ma The mail goes here. Your coat goes here. Your pool towel goes here. Here's what I expect you to do when you get home. And if that doesn't happen, hopefully in the next hour or two, or at least by the end of the day, here are my expectations. I want you to come back to the entryway and pick up after yourself, right? Play by play. You're giving them a plan A. Here's the ideal situation and a plan B. I get it. Sometimes we're all in a hurry when we get home. Stuff gets tossed where it doesn't belong. Come back around once you've done what you needed to do and put your stuff away. Plan A, plan B, step by step. And and literally go through this process with them. I know it sounds silly and you're not gonna do this in like a nagging or condescending way. Just say, hey, I've noticed that you tend to leave all your stuff on the floor of the entryway. Would you be willing to do this instead? This would be really helpful for me and for you in our family unit if your mail went here right away and your keys went here and your book bag went here. And instead of you putting it away for them, make sure to have them do it. I know it's a small nuance and again, it might sound kind of silly, but them actively putting their stuff where it belongs as you're walking through this play-by-play -play with them helps them build muscle memory which helps them remember to do it on their own 
the next time. And here's the thing, because they're not perfect and they're gonna put stuff where it doesn't belong, make sure to do this. Instead of getting triggered and frustrated and annoyed, which still might happen, <laughs> but if you can, take a deep breath. If you notice those shoes on the floor where they don't belong, take a deep breath. And then I want you to say out loud in a non-judgmental way, hey, sweetie, I noticed your shoes are on the living room floor. So you're not going in with a nagging statement or a judgmental statement, and you're not going in to that conversation in a heightened emotion, are you? You're just saying a fact. You're saying what you notice. You are the sportscaster. I like using sports analogies, don't I? <laughs> you're the sportscaster. You're saying what you notice. And that gives your family members a chance to autocorrect. It's a beautiful thing. I use this in my house all the time, and it works. So what does that mean? I get triggered a lot less, and my kids and family put stuff away, and it gives them a chance to fix it and continue to get better at putting stuff away. Number three is to make it as easy as possible for them to do what you want them to do. Most people never think about this, but you probably want your partner to put their keys on a key hook, the mail where the mail goes, and their coat where the coats go. But if you don't have a coat rack, or if you don't have a hook for coats, or if it's not easy for them to do what you want them to do, chances are very slim that that's actually gonna happen. If you don't have a designated spot for all of these things that come in and out of your house constantly all day, whether it's your kids, your stuff, your purse, the hats, the whatever it is, <laughs> stuff will land where it's not supposed to. Maybe it's toys. Let's talk about toy pickup for a minute. If there are 800 toys in your house and you are getting frustrated that your kids aren't picking up, it's not easy for them to pick up 800 toys when those toys are scattered all over the house. So doing simple things like decluttering their toys and doing toy rotation can be easy ways to simplify. And I hear from so many students that once they declutter the toys and simplify the play space, their kids went from being completely resistant to picking up toys to willfully and almost gladly, <laughs> happily picking up toys when it's just really easy for them to do it. If you want your kids to hang their bath towels after bath time, but they're always on the floor, look at the hook. Can they even hang the hook? Or maybe it'd be better just to instill a rod so it's easier for them to hang depending on their ages. These small nuances in the way our physical environment are set up either help us do what we should or make it more difficult. So that's amazing homework for you to do today is spend five, six minutes going through your house and identifying, do I actually have designated homes for stuff? Is it easy for them to do what I want them to do? Or could my house benefit from some new organizational aspects, even if it's just something simple, like some hooks on the wall or lowering them to my kid's height to make it easy. Number four is to not throw too much at them at once. I know sometimes as parents, when we are on this mission to help get our family and kids on board with picking up after themselves, we just want to divvy out all these new tasks, chores, and responsibilities to the kids. And it does what? It becomes too overwhelming. In fact, that's the number one reason people don't stick to new habits is because they take on too much too soon. And before you know it, whether it's a day or a week later, those habits, none of them came to fruition because it was too much. So when it comes to pickup, maybe focus on one spot or one habit that you want them to begin with. And then once that becomes automatic, remember not perfection, we're not looking for perfection, we're looking for the majority of the time or maybe even 50% of the time. And remember, while they are working on getting better at putting stuff back where they belong, always pay attention and notice the times when they do get things right, when they do put their shoes away the first time, when they do hang their coat up or their pool towel on the hook. It's helpful, it's so easy as parents to notice the things that don't get done. But remember, you're their coach and their cheerleader. So cheer them on and say how helpful it is for them to put stuff back and how it impacts not only you, but the entire family unit. Remember, we aren't looking for perfection, and that's why it's so important for you to understand the concept of the good enough home. So if you wanna learn more, click the video on your screen.